Hey folks, it's Andrew. Welcome back. I am so excited to you that you returned to watch more videos. If you're new, welcome. I talk about identity access management topics, some basic information. I also talk about some career services and how you can look for roles, mock interviews, and what to do like researching companies prior to an interview. I'm gonna finish off the I Am Basic series with the Libra process for workforce lifecycle management. This is a very critical path that many IM practitioners really need to make sure we get down pat. The reason why it's very important is if you have a bad process or a process that's not really fully flushed out, you can open yourself to a world of hurt. I'm gonna drop a couple examples of real companies, how they didn't really have a good process and it cost them a lot of money. I'm gonna also talk about the basics, the two different types of terminations or Libra processes and talk about some triggers you look at, how their process would work, really to give you a good idea and a good foundation when it comes to the Libra process. Stay tuned, let's talk more about Libra. So the Libra process is pretty critical when it comes to the whole workforce lifecycle management. In earlier videos, I talked about the joiner process, we talked about the mover process, and now the Libra process. Levers come in two forms. You can have a scheduled leave termination offboarding and you can have an immediate. A scheduled termination is if somebody has given their two weeks notice or their three weeks, however it is, or they're retiring, for example, and they want to, they told the company, hey, I'm leaving, here's my information, let's go. As a practitioner, when you have a scheduled termination, there are some, some factors you can take into consideration. Number one is the hope is you have a solid process of your authoritative source. Your authoritative source could be something like a workday, any HR system you may have. I hope you don't have a spreadsheet, but if you're a startup, hey, you make do. You take that process and you work with the HR team and you can identify certain criteria or triggers that could let you know, hey, somebody is being terminated. One of the attributes you can use is maybe a job status or a status. You can maybe use status and maybe title, whatever it is. As a practitioner, that's your job. You work with the HR team to re-identify what those triggers are. Once you identify those triggers, you look at the system you're using. So if you have an identity system or an IGA system, such as a sale point, for example, and there are others out there, but I'm really well versed in sale point, so it's easy for me to talk more about that. In SailPoint, what you can do is you can have a lever process where it can have a scheduled to kind of look at that system itself. You might have a daily looks, you might have every two hours. It all depends. From a management perspective in terms of load balancing, you need to make sure how many times you wanna hit that system. You can have it to do it maybe once a day. I've worked with some organizations where they do it early in the morning and then if something needs to be terminated as soon as possible, it becomes a mean termination, which we'll talk about soon in this video. Or you have it where you have it in the morning or in the afternoon and maybe twice a day because some of the organizations that I work with, they actually have people in the system itself. So you don't want to overtax that because there are a lot of processes that need to go into effect. So let's take, for example, you do it once in the morning. So usually your HR organization will set this lever process in advance. Somebody's leaving at 5 p.m. on a Friday Eastern time. You gotta be very specific. These are some of the nuances, by the way, of specific. I work with companies who are worldwide, so you might have to figure out what's the best approach. Going back earlier about time frames, you can have it early in the morning for maybe East Coast people, and maybe Central, and then West Coast or anybody in different countries, for example, you might have it on a different time zone or maybe in the, in the afternoon or at night that happens like at 12 midnight, for example, and maybe at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That is your raw, that is your job. Your job is to really make sure you get those informations and the requirements down pat and work with the organization to make sure that is solid. Once you have that in from a schedule, you have sell point trigger and they see a job change. And then in the workflows that have been created with your development team, you go, oh, hey, this person's leaving. What do we need to do? Typically, when a lever process happens, you, you shut down accounts. You wanna make sure that you effectively disable any accounts they may have. So if most organizations who use Active Directory, for example, you might have SellPoint go and tell that, hey, disable that user account. And then in AD, it should retroactively disable any 
access, if you use groups, for example, to give access to people, that will get shut down too. In addition to that, you gotta make sure, and these are all things you need to test, is, is the email turned off? Is any other applications turned off? And that's where things can get tricky. In the world today where we want to have single sign-on or SSO, and it's easier for us to manage access for third party, there could be times where you need to work on that other system or the system owner to let them know because not all systems talk to AD or cell point, and that's a big issue, and it happens a lot. So when you have a termination process in play and you work to develop that, you got to make sure you identify what applications connected to what. And that's where the big system architecture is really required because you need to understand, hey, if somebody gets terminated, what accounts do I know get automatically turned off? There are people who I need to notify, which sucks because you have a gap in there. Or, and then also do a, that persons or the system owners need to go into those systems and turn it off. Let me give you another example, because I'm all about examples. If you have a system like Salesforce, for example, and you have single sign-on, Salesforce, I know for uh, for my experience, does have that ability to look at your system to say, oh, I'm terminated, disabled the account. But just for our example's sake, let's say you don't have that turned on. You don't have that pretty much set yet. I would have to go make a phone call to my friend John, say, hey, John, listen, these three people are leaving today. Can you make sure to go and turn it off? Oh, great. But I'm giving human element to that. And that's the biggest problem. What if John has to go somewhere? What if something happens to Mercy and he's the only person that does this? We're in trouble. Because then the person can go and log in that way. And going back to how you set up access management, there could be situations where maybe you don't have single sign-on, you have a username and password, and then they just validate that way to the system. That happens. And if somebody is scheduled to leave, but then they say, oh, you know what? I forgot something. You know, I should, or I'm, I'm stealing clients. You know, that happens. I'm able to go into Salesforce because I know for a fact that my termination process has a, a gap in there and I know John is the only single point of failure. I can go in and get that information and leave. Those are common issues that happen today. So you want to make sure that from a scheduled termination perspective, you validate what are the triggers from the HR system? What is your IGA system doing if you have one to do that? What is the accounts on your if it's AD, for example, if it's something else, is that being terminated? And then validate. You're going to need to validate. Are the other systems being also turned off? Because the last thing you want to do also is, let's say you forget about Slack being turned off and somebody can go in and say a couple of things. Even though it's scheduled, they could or steal a couple of things because you'd be surprised how many people send stuff to their personal email. It happens often. And even knowing that there's a gap and come back and just take data. So... When it comes to a scheduled termination, you want to make sure that those are down pat. So let's talk about immediate terminations. Immediate terminations is when somebody needs to be terminated ASAP. You come in, something happened, you got caught, you're being dragged out of, of the building. I know it's very dramatic, but you know, like watching movies, stuff like that. You get terminated, you're leaving, okay? And, it's, and most likely immediate terminations are not the most happy of moment most time it's like you're done get out it's not really a a ceremonial process per se and the person could be like pissed off for example when that happens you need to make sure your meet termination process is solid just like the scheduled one but the difference is you usually have somebody who's emotional who are really pissed off and they might want to do some crazy stuff and trust me people have done crazy stuff you need to make sure that in the information, going back to our example, authoritative source, sale point, AD, okay? If I know I'm being, if I know somebody's getting me terminated, maybe a person from an HR rep or the manager might say, might go to sell point and, and have a, a process to go and meet terminate right then and there or have a person who has a delegation to do that job and then immediately terminate the account, hit enter, and then maybe they need a single approval. Again, this has happened in my career where you must have approvals because sometimes you, you want to make that fail safe check. And then things get terminated. Or you have somebody call help desk and they let them know they can go in and just temporarily disable their AD account while then HR catches up and being told up top to do their process from the top and then flow down. But I've already eliminated their access from AD. If that's how you handle it. And what I mean by if this is going back to the architecture of how things are talked about, if AD is your only source where you get access to things and you just disable from account from a help desk perspective, you're good. And, but if it's, again, going back to our examples, if there's other systems of SSL that don't have that option that they can't read with their AD and you need to go and manually do it, 
that comes to, again, a human element where you need to go and contact somebody to do that work. It's not ideal. We in the IM world would prefer to automate things the best we can, if possible. But you need to have these down pat. So in the overall identity world, we talked about you know best practices, move or lever. You want to make sure you document properly and you test out your scenarios because you just you just never know because that's a huge thing. So in meet terminations is where you got to make sure it's down pat because there has been cases and going back to our Slack example where somebody has been terminated and then there's a gap or a delay in Slack and a person can go in from home, log in from the login ID in Slack, get in there and just say, you know what, screw this company, this person sucks, this, that, and maybe honestly steal data. Because people are crazy like that. And let me give you some examples of just how crazy some of these things are. So there has been a case, and there's been big cases, and one of the ones that was Target. So Target in 2013, I'm going to read this real quick, is they had a massive data breach of 40 million customers, customers, by the way, that it was breached from a third-party vendor access, but it's because somebody who got terminated their contract, it didn't, it wasn't fully processed properly and there are gaps and that's how it got caught was they had somebody's access who wasn't properly terminated because of the contract that expired. Somebody or somebody knew that and got in and breached data. That cost Target $200 million in damages, 200 million. Equifax, we all know Equifax. I got hit Equifax, everybody did, right? Oh yeah, sorry, here you go, here's a letter, great, thanks. Anyway, they, 2017, they were breached again, oh, over 140 million people, I'm one of those 140 million people, their sensitive information got breached. And all because the company had not properly terminated access to employees who were responsible for the breach. $700 million settlement with the FTC because of that, because they didn't properly terminate somebody's access. I'm not saying the employee did it, but in, in today's world where you know, for example, in the dark dark web, your accounts could be there if you're a person that creates a simple password and you don't have MFA turned on, that 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 could be a problem and maybe that's how they got in. We're not sure because they didn't disclose all that. And then the last one is Uber. And 2016, Uber had a big data breach too of 57 million customers and drivers. Crap, I could be one of those too. And it's because hackers got in through a compromised name password because it wasn't properly terminated. And that's what I mean by it's such an important thing for you to go in and make sure that your termination process, immediate or scheduled, is properly done. Because if not, these are just three of many cases of companies having their data being compromised, being in the national news, which is not great, and then paying hefty fines to, or settlements to really fix this problem. And I'm not even talking about if you're a publicly traded company, the stock prices. So when you talk about terminations from an IM practitioner world, you gotta make sure you know the process well. You really talk to the right owners, stake owners, leaders, HR leaders, whoever, and we you test that process from start to finish. You make sure it is working in any system and you document and you review constantly with your teams. And one last thing too, stage it. Do a do a do a dry run. Do a couple dry runs throughout the year. Make sure you have it on pat. Because one thing that I didn't talk about that could happen is of all this whole scheme is there could be times where your termination process is by mistake. And that's the last thing I want to talk about is that. There are times where you might have a termination process where the person is maybe the wrong person or they change their mind. What do you do? How do you handle that? There are times in an in organization I work for where they just kill everything like, sorry, and from scratch, we have to go back and put everything back in. There are some things like cell point, for example, where you can enable snapshots where at a certain place in time, I'm just taking a snapshot of their access today and I can just give that back and everything else they can request and get there too. That's an option too. So. When it comes to terminations, you want to make sure all those are really in, in, in play. So I talked about some of the best practices. Make sure you document everything properly. You really communicate with your right stakeholders, your authoritative leaders, make sure that process is on pat. You do dry runs to make sure that your termination process is going, is going solid. And then you make sure that you know all the systems that are, let's say, tied to your AD and ones that are not because when you're terminate, when things are terminated or when somebody's terminated, 
you got to make sure that that all the systems are being properly disabled because if not i just talked about three big companies and the cost for there you don't want to be that company or that person responsible because that just sucks so that's the summarization of lever and how you want to handle that t- t- today and as you go throughout your career knowing these basics mover joiner lever and how important they are regardless of the systems that are being used it is paramount that you are very solid in these because these are the basic fundamentals that will help you thrive in your career really want to take my time to thank everybody for watching these videos i really hope they help more to come i'm gonna talk about certifications in the in the future i'm gonna talk about a couple of other things upcoming and one last thing i want to plug is I have my own personal website now and I'm going to take a lot of these videos and put them on there and I hope that you have a avenue to go back and look at these and just go from the website too. So take a look at my website. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm also going to link to a couple of other places to talk more about Lever just to give you a better idea. And then if you happen to not see the other videos of Joiner and Mover, I'll make sure I'll link them in the after credits today so you can look at them, them too. Thank you so much for watching and as always. Stay curious because you never know. I'll see you.